You won't believe how the military used to discharge people left and right without benefits. Welcome back to the channel, folks. Dr. Sharma here, physician, board certified psychiatrist, and Air Force veteran. As always, I wanted to mention that this video is for informational purposes only. It is not medical or psychiatric advice. Today, we're discussing the very dark past of the military and how they used to discharge people with mental illness left and right without giving them the benefits that they deserve. This history is important for multiple reasons, but the main one is that we need to learn from the past and as a society and government, not repeat the same mistakes. Imagine serving your country only to be told that you have a personality disorder and being discharged because of it. This was a reality for thousands of service members, but why did this happen and what were the consequences? Between 2001 and 2007, the military discharged about 26,000 service members for personality disorders. These diagnoses were often made quickly and without a thorough evaluation. In fact, a government accountability office study found that many of these diagnoses did not even meet the Department of Defense's own requirements. Keep in mind, although this study looked at the years between 2001 and 2007, this was going on even before that at a higher rate. It just hasn't been formally studied and put into a research article. As a psychiatrist, I know how difficult diagnosing a personality disorder can be. Personality disorders are complex. They involve long-term patterns of thoughts and behaviors that are unhealthy and unflexible. But importantly, the way we diagnose them is by careful and repeated evaluations. That's right, I typically need to see someone for multiple evaluations over the course of months, even longer, and I need to speak to their family members to gather what we call collateral information, which is information from third parties and background. But guess what? In these studies, they found that service members were diagnosed with a personality disorder after just one or two encounters with a military provider, sometimes not even seeing a mental health provider, so just going to a general practitioner. Now, stop and think about this for a second. Imagine if someone was discharged from the military for a very complex cardiac condition, and it was done by a general practitioner instead of a cardiologist. Would that fly? No, of course not. So why should it fly for mental illness? And of course, if someone was diagnosed with a personality disorder and administratively discharged, they were often discharged without benefits and they had a label of personality disorder as the reason for separation. This could affect their ability to find a job later, access mental health resources, and of course, in the whole process, they lost their military careers and they faced a ton of stigma both inside the military and in the civilian world. I've worked with a lot of veterans in getting this issue corrected by doing an evaluation, often working with attorneys and law firms as well, and every single one of them tells me about how they were ashamed to speak about their military service because of the administrative discharge and the label. This is terrible on so many different fronts, especially since this person signed on that dotted line, joined the military, and made so many sacrifices for their country. On top of that, these veterans that I have worked with, every single one of them, the personality disorder diagnosis was erroneous. That's right, it turned out that they actually had a major depressive disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, PTSD, or something along those lines. And this makes sense, right? Personality disorders are lifelong. They're based on your personality traits and our personality traits are static, meaning that they stay the same mostly throughout our lives. And if someone has a personality disorder, they've had it their entire lives. So why would that person be able to join the military, do their training, serve at a duty station, even deploy at times, and then all of a sudden they develop a personality disorder? No way. It's good to keep in mind that a lot of symptoms of things like PTSD, depression, TBI can overlap with personality disorders. This is also why it's improper and unfair to diagnose someone with a personality disorder if they're going through a depressive mood episode or exacerbation of PTSD. However, 
This has happened frequently in the past in the military. This often used to happen after command referrals, where basically service members are referred to the medical clinic because of some issues happening in their unit. One other thing to keep in mind is that even outside of the military and employment, getting a personality disorder diagnosis can be rough in the medical record. For instance, if someone gets falsely diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, then that label gets carried with them and it can change how providers or therapists view them. Now, the hope is that this has improved over time. And to be fair, there have been efforts to address this issue. The military has updated their policies to ensure more accurate diagnoses and better support for people. Typically, there'll be a medical evaluation board of multiple physicians who look at the case. This is how it used to be done when I was a flight doc and I left the Air Force in 2015. And nowadays, they always refer to a psychologist or a psychiatrist for any disabling mental health conditions. But for folks who were discharged falsely in the past, the damage has already been done. It's an uphill battle to get a personality disorder discharge changed. It typically takes years, involves working with a lawyer, working with an examiner like myself, and of course, a lot of frustration in the bureaucratic process, not to mention the cost of using all these services. All because the commander of the unit, and more importantly, the providers who examined the service members did not want to deal with the actual condition or do a full thorough evaluation. So what can we learn from this? It's crucial to ensure that mental health diagnoses are made accurately and with care, especially in high stakes environments like the military. We have to do better for the people who serve our country. It is simply inexcusable that any of this has happened in the past and we have to make sure it never happens again. That's it for today's video. I hope this was helpful for you to take a deeper look at how the military used to discharge people, many times erroneously, based on faulty diagnoses. I have the references for the studies I used to make this video in the description. If you found this episode helpful, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. It really helps and it tells me that I'm doing something right. Also, please drop a comment below about your thoughts on this topic. And if you have requests on what to cover in the future, I'd be happy to make a video on it. Remember, I also have an online course for veterans with PTSD and anxiety. Check out the description for a link. As always, thanks for watching. Dr. Sharma signing off. See you next time.